chemical research come the thousands of products that contribute to better living. The DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the DuPont Cavalcade Theater, dramatic stories of people who are a part of the Cavalcade of America. America's great national forests. The man, that's me, Norm Keller, one of the thousands of forest rangers whose duty it is to protect and manage these lands. 300,000 acres of mile-high timber, grazing land, watersheds, and wildlife. To the forest ranger, the maintenance and protection of it is a full-time job, and this is 72 hours of it. Some of it pleasant, some of it not so pleasant but all of it based on fact. Morning, Ranger Norm. Morning, Ruth. All set for a big day in the village? Oh, you bet. Got a dozen things to do, too. I'm sure glad you could come to take over the fire watch today. Let's get lonely up here. You ought to call for relief more often. Lonely? After nine months of facing 40 school children with Shakespeare and Shelley, <laughs> why, being up here by myself each summer is the high point of the year. Well, better get going. Your wife radioed about an hour ago, wants to talk to you right away. I'll call her. Oh, I made a pot of coffee for you. Help yourself, won't you? Thanks. And keep a sharp lookout now. The weather's awfully dry, and I don't want any fires in my section while I'm away. Wickedby Tower calling warehouse. Wickedby calling warehouse. Wickedby calling warehouse. Warehouse to Wickedby. How's the weather up there, darling? The weather's fine, Mary, but remember, this is an open frequency. Well, nobody's listening but us fire watchers, so you go ahead and call him anything you want, Mrs. Ranger. Indian Crest over and out. Well, thank you, Mr. Adams. Now, Wickedby, you just received a wire from the Continental Lumber Company. Two of their executives will be here tomorrow noon. Guess that means fixing lunch? Beat a mountain line. That'll impress them. Anything else? Yes, yeah, Sheriff Payne was by early this morning. He says he has to see you right away. There's trouble of some kind. He's on his way to the lookout now. I'll be expecting him. See you tomorrow, darling. Warehouse, over and out. Hi, Sheriff. Come on in. Coffee's still hot. Have a cup? I don't care if I do. What's on your mind? Came up to see you about old Pop Smith. He's not in hot water again, is he? Well, he was in the village this morning, got into another beef. This time to one of the local cowhands. Beat him up pretty bad. Where's Pop now? I don't know. He's somewhere out there in the woods. That's what I come to see you about. You planning to arrest him? No. The fellow we beat up on doesn't want to press charges. But I want to keep an eye on him until I can get the game commissioner to revoke his license. Then I'm going to order him out of this county as a vagrant. Ah, oh, Harry, that's pretty rough, isn't it? Pop be lost out of these woods. That old troublemaker was born a hundred years too late. He thinks and acts just like the animals that live out there in the woods with him. I'm just afraid that one of these days that temper of his is going to explode once too often and he's going to kill somebody. And I don't want that to happen in my county. Look, Harry, I think I know where Pop's gone. He's got a shack up in the hills. When Ruth Thompson gets back, I'll go out and find him, and I'll talk to him. Norm, you've talked to him before. I know. But once more, as a favor to me, huh, Harry? All right, just this once. But if he gets into trouble again, that's going to be it. He won't, I promise you. Well, thanks for the coffee anyway. Pop. 
Oh. Well, now, ain't this a surprise? I'm sure glad to see you. Come on over and sit a spell. This place sure hasn't changed. It's been like this for a thousand years. Ah, don't want no change. Men of the woods like you and me don't need no change. Well, nature's nice, but there are other things. When you forget that, you lose step with the times. <laughs> Who wants to stay in step with these times? Men turning into mealy mouth shadows of what they once was? Why, they forgot what it's like to sleep on the range. Or to have to kill what you eat before it eats you. Uh, seeing the world go soft fills a man with disgust. What happened in the village yesterday, Pop? Well, you could say it was me popping off again. Has you been drinking? No. That tarantula juice they served down there raised blood blisters on a rawhide boot. I wouldn't have no truck with it. Well, drunk or sober, it's the third fight you've been in this month. How'd this one get started? I'd rather not say. You're about as popular with some of the folks in the village as a wounded grizzly bear on the loose. Now, you won't have to worry no more about me, Norm. That's why I was in the village. I'm setting me up something. From now on, I'm going to be just fine. And you can bank on it. Hope so. I'd miss you around these parts, Pop. Well, thanks. But you won't have to worry about old Pop. So long. So long. Would you like some more coffee, Miss Lewis? Uh, just a little, please. You know, Ranger, I've always wondered why it was that fellows like you, college graduate and all that, thanks, wanted to come out here in the hinterlands and live. But with all this beautiful scenery and peace and quiet, I'm beginning to understand. Not to mention the good food, Mrs. Keller. Oh, I'll take a bath. <laughs> take a bow, Mary. Thank you. Can I get you something else? Oh, thanks. I wouldn't know where to put it. From your letter, I gather you want to get to the backcountry logging camps. Yeah, we hope to get ourselves a deer on the way. You'll need a guide. The company got one for us. He confirmed the appointment by wire yesterday. Name's uh, Smith, Jeremiah Smith. We call him Pop Smith. He's a good man, has a broad streak of rugged individualism, doesn't take too kindly to the products of civilization. <laughs> That's a refreshing change. <laughs> well, I want to make table plateau tonight, so we better get going. We head into deer country first thing in the morning. First rule of packing in is never argue with your guide. Oh, Norm. Hi, Sam. I see you a minute. Sure. What can I do for you? Well, I was hoping you could bunk in at my place tonight and then in the morning ride out to the range. I got a chance to make a quick buy on some cattle, but well, I'm going to need some extra grass. Looks like I'm going in the other direction, men, so good hunting to you. I get my horse. See you at the barn. All right. You ready, gentlemen? Yeah. All set. We're on our way. How do you want to bring him to the range, Sam? A mm, couple hundred head. That's a good gamma grass, all right. Density's fine, too. I'll give you a temporary permit to bring in a hundred head. Well, that's not enough grass for the stalk I want to buy. I know, but when we were riding through the Fork Range Canyon this morning, I noticed the grass is getting pretty heavy use. You need to give it a rest. All right. I can still pick up 60 head of that beef stalk I want. Maybe next year you can get the rest, huh? Let's see. What could be? Calling X-502. X-502, come in, Wickerby. We have a small fire on Clover Ridge, just south of Summer Trail. How's it look, Ruth? Well, not booming. White smoke about a half acre in size. Chuck Owens was on duty at fire control. He and three men are going up there now. Alert all suppression crews. We may need them. Right. Over and out. <laughs>
How's it look, Chuck? She started on the southeast rim. Means it's pretty well confined. That means our luck is running good. No, not all of it. Come on down to the bluff. There's something out of sea. The sheriff's already here. What is it, Harry? It isn't pretty. His head's laid wide open. We did catch Doc Lacey, though, over in Barrington. He'll be back by the time we get this man down the mountain. Is he bad? He's going to be touch and go. He's got a pulse like a sparrow. One of those New York fellas, isn't he? Yeah. His name is Fred Lewis. You seen his partner, Johnson, or Pop Smith around? Pop Smith? Yeah. I don't like the look of this, Norm. According to the signs, this man crawled and scratched his way down the water's edge. As if he already had this head injury. What are you getting at, Harry? Well, if you clobbered somebody and you wanted to destroy the evidence, there wouldn't be a better way than to roast him in the woods, would there? Just lucky for him that the wind changed and slowed down that fire. He might be a goner. You got anybody in particular in mind who might have said it? His pockets were rifled. He's got a troublemaker for a guide. You take it from there. Now, wait a minute. Let's find Pop Smith and Johnson before we make an accusation. All right. Let's move them out, boys. Take it easy. Norm. Suppose that Johnson's out there someplace in the same condition as Lewis. I will know about that when we find him. Find him. Honest. Dreaded words to a forest ranger who must take every step to see that no harm comes to those in his district. But here the problem was compounded. One man was on the brink of death. Two others might already be dead. Where else to Wickerby? Wickerby, go ahead. Any word, Ruth? Not a thing. I can see the relief crews working their way down Clover Ridge. I called Joe Adams. He's got nothing to report either. Thanks, Ruth. Where else over now? Good morning, Mr. Kelly. Having missed your dinner last night, would you like some breakfast? Mary, you shouldn't come across the yard dressed like that. Porky killed two rattlers last week. There you go, spoiling the romantic illusion. I'm wearing my boots. Lola? Fine, you'll find them. Yeah, but in what condition? Mr. Lewis still hasn't regained consciousness? No. And he may not either. If it was an accident, Mary, I'm sure it was. Of course it was. Look, no one. You're only a forest ranger. You can't be held accountable for the whole world. Just 300,000 acres of it. Well, I guess I'll saddle a fresh horse and get out in the field. Is there a breakfast? Indian Crest, call and warehouse. Indian Crest, call and warehouse. Warehouse Indian Crest, come in. Assistant ranger wants to talk to you. Chuck Owens, Norm. The suppression crew just found Johnson. What's his condition? Well, he's scared and he's tired, but otherwise he's okay. Good word, Chuck. I'll meet you at fire camp. Right. Warehouse, over and out. So he says we'll split up. Fred and me taking the flank. Him in front to look for a deer. I was to be what Pop Smith called a pivot, not, not to leave my position, just wait while they circled. They didn't come back. How long did you wait, Mr. Johnson? Oh, let's see, about, about an hour, I guess. And I decided to go for help. I walked due east. Been walking that way ever since. Fred been worried about me? Mr. Johnson, your friend suffered a very serious head injury. He may not survive. Oh, how did it happen? Did you see the fire on Clover Ridge yesterday? I saw some smoke, but what's that got to do with Fred? Well, it's my theory that Mr. Lewis got caught in the path of the fire and was injured trying to get out. I'd like to get down to the village and wire Fred's wife. I'll let one of my men help you. Chuck! Now, just a minute. Were you there when they found Fred? Shortly after. Did, uh, did they check his things? What do you mean? The logging superintendent asked us if we'd bring the month's payroll to the cutting camp. That way he wouldn't have to dispatch a man for a day. That Fred was carrying the money. Nine thousand dollars. Mr. Lewis didn't have any money on him. In fact, he had nothing in his pocket. And it was no accident. He was attacked and robbed. 
That's the matter with the police, Mr. Johnson. Take care of it, sir. All right, uh, so long. Yeah. Uh, this ranger said I'd find you here. What is it? Well, late yesterday when I was taking my cattle up the ridge pastures, like you asked me to, uh -huh. I saw him. You saw who? Old Pop Smith. He's about done in, so I took him over to my place. When I couldn't reach you, I called the sheriff. Well, they come out for him. They arrest him, Norm. They got him in jail. Come on. Harry? Norm? I was expecting you. Here you found Johnson. Yeah. I heard about Pop Smith, too. Kind of anxious to make an arrest, aren't you, Harry? Well, I don't know. I had a pretty good reason. $9,000. Pop Smith had it on him. Can I see him? No harm in that. All right. Did you do it, Pop? I don't believe I told you what that fight was about the other day. I'd gone to the village to send a wire and get some supplies. When a big cow hand makes a crack about me living in the back country so long, I was beginning to look like one of those grizzlies that lives there with me. And probably just as stupid, too. It was then I whopped him. For saying you were stupid? For saying a grizzly's stupid. What's your point? I'm trying to draw a likeness. When I gotta make a choice between taking up for people in a grizzly, I naturally lean toward the grizzly. And while I don't feel myself a big part of the human race, I wouldn't kill one of them. Now, you've got to believe that, Norm. How did Lewis's money happen to end up with you? I took him up in the big timber where I saw plenty of deer last week. I had Johnson act as pivot. Lewis and me walked together as far as Sundown Creek, where we was to fan out. Then Lewis recollected that he didn't have a waterproof jacket. And he asked me to keep his belongings dry for him. And Lewis wanted you to keep his thing. Yeah. And when I got back to camp, neither one of them was there. So I started looking for him. Day and night I looked. Until I ran into Sam Chester. What'll they do with me, Norm? That depends on what we do. Now, I want you to tell me exactly what you did from the time the three of you fanned out. I've made a rough sketch of the entire South Rim area. I want you to map every move that you made. Well, there's an old deer trail that runs from the camp where we left Johnson down to Sundown Creek, about a half a mile. Now, it was here that Lewis gave me his belongings. He waded across the creek, and I told him to keep watching the sun and to keep it just over his left shoulder. People that depend on you, Mr. Ranger. And, and you can't let all the rest of them down just for one man. He didn't attack that man, Mary. Pop Smith doesn't have that kind of violence in him. I've seen him in the village. Little kids teaching them how to throw a diamond hitch or how to shoe a horse. He's a simple man with simple wants. He wouldn't even be interested in $9,000. Maybe that much money could... Change, man. Not far. There's another thing, too. Sheriff Payne has the idea that Pop Smith attacked Lewis and then set the fire to destroy the evidence of the attack. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Oh. 
Pop Smith wanted to start a fire, he'd have never picked the southeast rim of the Clover Ridge. He knows as well as I that a fire wouldn't burn long in that area. How did the fire start? Well, I think it was a campfire. Miss Norm, I know how you feel about the people in your district, how you believe in them and try to help them, but... Well, maybe... Maybe they're not all as good as you think they are. And maybe Pop doesn't deserve your help anymore. I don't want to hear that kind of talk, Mary. Now, you run along to bed. I'm going over to the office. I'm sorry to bother you again, Ranger, but I'm catching an early train upstate. So I thought I'd drop by and give you my phone number. You can call me in case there's a change in Fred's condition. Don't you think you should wait until you know more about his condition? There's nothing more I can do. I've sent for a top specialist to care for him. I see. While I'm here, I'm also going to call our attorneys. I want to make certain that guide is punished for what he did. Mr. Johnson, these are topography maps of this area. I spent all night going over them, and I... Keller talking. Yeah? Harry, I want you to wait until I get there. Yes, it is important. I was Sheriff Payne. He's received his release to take Pop Smith to Barrington and set his bail. I told him to wait until we got down there. Well, what for? I think they're putting the wrong man on trial. Johnson. Hey, Norman, whatever it is, make it fast, because that bus for Barrington is supposed to be here now pretty quick, and I got orders for Pop and me to be on it. Wait a minute, Harry. Suppose I could prove that somebody besides Pop started that forest fire. Can you? I think so. When I was over on Clover Ridge yesterday, I found some kindling and some fire rocks. It was what was left of a campfire. The kind of a fire that a novice like Mr. Johnson might start. Well, that's insane. I was miles from where that fire started. Are you sure? Ranger Keller. Uh, I may not be an outdoorsman, but I do know where the sun rises and where it sets. And from the time I decided Fred and that guide were lost, I walked due east toward the village. And that's in the opposite direction from the fire. You started out east, all right. But Pop Smith didn't tell you that Snow River would stop the path of a foot trap. The way it stopped you, Mr. Johnson. And make you detour your course without you knowing. Snow River had you boxed in. Kept bringing you right back where you'd been before. You were walking in a circle. I don't believe it. Did you build a campfire? Yes. And you reached into your knapsack and came out with a can of beans. When you realized that you didn't have a can opener, you pried it open with a sharp rock. Well, yes, I, I opened the can on a rock, but how did you know? I found this can at the side of the campfire. The campfire you were supposed to be miles from, Mr. Johnson. Then I started the fire? While you were heating these beans, Fred Lewis was probably tramping around not a hundred yards from where you were. But then you left without putting the fire out proper. It ignited some brush, and Lewis had to run for his life probably falling and hurting his head in the process. I don't know what to say. Well, whatever you got to say, I suggest you get over to that clinic and just hope you get a chance to say it to your friend Lewis. I'm sorry. Very sorry. Maybe the next time I come out, I'll learn the proper way to build a fire. Fred Lewis did survive, and the accident became a matter of record, part of an official report. It had started Wednesday at noon. This was Saturday at noon. 72 hours of activity varying from estimating the density of gamma grass to helping save the lives of three men. Some of it the ordinary. Some of it the extraordinary. All of it based on fact.
invite you to be with us again next week when the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware will again present the DuPont Cavalcade Theater.